Hey there tech fans, Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'd like to provide some guidance on things to consider if you're searching for an HDMI extension kit that will allow you to share your HDMI media content with a single or even multiple remote locations at the same time. Because there are a wide variety of HDMI extension kits on the market, and it's really important that you understand the features that matter so you can select the exact right HDMI extender kit for your particular media setup. And before I get into all of that, I thought I'd start off with a basic understanding of what an HDMI extension kit is designed to do and why you may need one. So normally, you have a media player and you have a display, and you'll make the connection between the media device and the display using a standard HDMI cable, even a high-performance HDMI cable. The challenge becomes, if the display device is far away from that media device, the HDMI standard doesn't provide for extensions that are really over 10 meters. So if you start extending beyond that, you're gonna have some connection issues between your media device and your monitor. It gets even worse if the media player is in your media center and that display is in an upstairs bedroom or downstairs in the den, you can't use an HDMI cable to make that connection any longer. And that's exactly what an HDMI extension kit is designed to help with. You basically have a transmitter that's located at the primary site, and you have a receiver that's located at the remote site, and the transmitter will take the HDMI signal, convert it into a signal that can be sent to the receiver. The receiver will then take that signal and convert it back into an HDMI media stream so you can display it on the monitor. And the connection between the transmitter and receiver can be over a LAN cable or a coaxial cable, or even over a wireless connection, and I'll get into all that in a minute. But essentially, the conversion takes place here, it's sent to the receiver, another conversion takes place so you can view it on the monitor. And there are a lot of features that come into play during that process. And the most basic of those features is the resolution of the content you'd like to send from the primary to the secondary site. If you're only transmitting 1080p content, a very simple system will work well for you. But if you need higher resolutions, 4K or 8K, you'll need to make sure whatever HDMI extension kit you're considering can handle those higher resolutions. The challenge as well is that with the higher resolutions, the distance tends to be shorter. It seems simpler with lower resolution content to extend it even further. So it's really important you understand what resolution, whatever HDMI extension kit you're considering can handle to make sure that you're ready to go with the content you'd like to send. Some of the kits on the market will actually down res the further distance you go. So it may start out as a 4K, but only display 1080p at that remote location. And that's a really critical thing to consider. The second consideration has to do with the connection topology between the primary and secondary site. The most basic connection will be a LAN connection, typically CAT5e, CAT6, or CAT7. And that's a very simple connection to make between the primary and secondary locations. But you may already have a home that's wired for coaxial cable, or if it's a commercial installation, it may be easier to run coaxial cable. So LAN is one choice, coaxial RG75 cable is another choice, or maybe you want to use a wireless connection between the primary and secondary site, which doesn't require a cable at all. The challenge with wireless connections is that it typically limits the distance and you have to worry about obstructions in the building. So if you're trying to go through a wall or go very far away in a warehouse that's got a lot of noise in the warehouse and a lot of interference, you may have issues with the wireless connection. Typically wireless is good for short distances, lower resolution. If you need higher resolution or further distances, you're gonna need a wired connection, either a LAN or a coaxial connection in that case. Another consideration is the type of certification the product has. And there are two main certifications, HDMI and HDCP. The HDMI certification hopefully is a 2.1, which is one of the latest HDMI certifications that's absolutely mandatory if you're gonna transmit 4K content. And the reason it's important is because the HDMI standard has gone through a lot of changes in recent years, and there have been a lot of advanced features introduced into the HDMI standard. Things like CEC, ARC audio, remote control of devices, all kinds of other features are built in. So knowing you've got a system that adheres to the latest HDMI standards is really important, especially if you'd like to take advantage of some of those advanced functionalities. The HDCP standard is important as well, and the latest one there is 2.2, and the reason HDCP is important is because that controls copy protection. So if you're looking at media through that transport that's copy protected, knowing you're on HDCP 2.2 means you can play a wider variety of different media styles. So it's important to check the HDMI standard and the HDCP standard. The best you can get is HDMI 2.1 and HDCP 2.2. Another consideration is the remote control from that secondary location. A lot of the basic HDMI extender kits will just take the HDMI media and send it to the remote location. 
So think about that. If you're in the remote location, you'll have to start playing the media at the primary side and then run up to the secondary side and you won't have any control over starting or stopping or rewinding that content. So a kit that has an infrared blaster included gives you complete remote control from that secondary site because essentially this unit will pick up the remote control signals at that remote location and then send those back over that transport medium to the primary location where they're rebroadcast. So you can essentially remotely control the content from that secondary site and the media players located at the primary site. So infrared blasters or some type of infrared remote control is a critical feature that you should look for in any HDMI extension kit you're considering. Another nice feature to have would be KVM functionality. A lot of the HDMI extender kits on the market provide that level of functionality, which essentially allows you to connect up a keyboard and mouse at the remote location and have those signals sent back over that same transport medium, the LAN cable, the coaxial cable, or the Wi-Fi connection to the primary site so you can remotely control a computer that's located over here. Another consideration is local loopback functionality. Local loopback essentially allows you to enjoy the content at the primary site while you're simultaneously sharing it with the remote location. And that's important because a normal HDMI extension kit that just takes that media content and sends it to the remote site means that you can not enjoy it here. So you're either watching the content here or you're sending it to that upstairs bedroom. Having local loopback functionality means that you can still transmit that content to the remote location, but you can connect another monitor up at the primary location and enjoy that content at the same time. So it's a great way to share a movie with the kids upstairs or other things that you want to put around that house for people to enjoy together. One other feature that's really important on the unit is audio extraction or audio injection. And what I mean by that is some of these kits provide a standard ARC compliance or EARC compliance, which allows you to connect the remote receiver to a stereo or a sound bar for better quality audio. Other kits allow you to inject audio at the primary side and then extract audio at the secondary side. So if you care about the sound quality at that remote location being the best it can possibly be, make sure you check for either ARC compliance or at least audio extraction capabilities at the remote site. One final feature that comes into play quite often in commercial environments is the one-to-many relationship. Normally an HDMI extension kit is a one-to-one -one relationship where a single transmitter will send the same HDMI media content to one remote location at a time, but there are kits available on the market where you can add additional receivers and actually cascade those receivers off a single transmitter, which allows you to send the same HDMI media content to multiple remote locations at the same time. And that's perfect in a commercial environment. For example, if you have a restaurant, you may have multiple monitors that you want to present the same content on or you're in a commercial environment in an office where you want to have that same content shown on multiple monitors or maybe you're at a trade show and you've got a looping video that you'd like to show all the consumers that are at that trade show on multiple monitors so check to see if the system you're considering is a one-to-one -one or if there's an option to go one-to-many all of these things are important features that may or may not matter in your particular setup, but it's really important you understand what they are so you can easily compare one HDMI extension kit to another when you're shopping for that product. That's all I really had for today, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, thanks for watching.